Well, debate rages over the decision to stand down four members of the Australian cricket team for disciplinary reasons. Vice-captain Shane Watson arrived home overnight. He made it clear he's only back because his first child is about to be born and he was keen to set the record straight on his relationship with Clarkie. Like I've worked my absolute bum off as well to be able to have an opportunity to be able to represent my country and um, when that's taken away from you, um, you think that the the actions that means that that's being taken away from has to be very severe and um, that's where we differ on in our opinions. Michael Clark is standing by the coaching staff. He says the players have shown a lack of respect for the head coach and the Australian team. For more, I'm joined by today's Angels Olympian, Elka Whalen, Austereo Southern Cross, Sydney News Director Deborah Clay <laughs> and Editor of Life and Style of smh.com.au. That's a longer title. Uh, I, I just we? make it complicated for uh, you. Yeah. Good morning, <laughs> ladies. Lady. Yeah. Elka, <laughs> you played in team sports. What do you reckon? What is going on with sport at the moment in general, my goodness, is just really rising in terms of the cricket. Look, this is ridiculous that he's been stood down for not following, a, well, as such an order with uh, the three other boys that have been stood down as well. I think it's very, very harsh. I can understand him coming home for his firstborn child, you know, about to arrive very shortly. I think the media is really focusing on the tension between Clark and Watson when they really should be focusing on, OK, is this right? Has the wow. coaching decision made the right decision on what they've done? He has done the wrong thing and also he carries extra pressure and responsibility as being vice captain. But I don't think he should have been sent home. Mm. I think there's been a really You're surprising me there, Elka. I backlash. would have picked you going the other way. Mm. Um, obviously, this is just the surface. There's deep cultural problems within, within the Aussie cricket team. Deb. Sure, but being sent all the way home for that, that's very harsh. Mm. I don't know. Kenny Hinckley would do that at Port Adelaide <laughs> if he didn't... You know, they're, they're elite teams, aren't they, Deb? What do you do? What's well, the message we get out of this? Clearly there's a push within cricket to change the culture, to make it more professional. Shane Warne, on his Facebook page this morning, he's posted that back in his day, if there was a problem, if people weren't getting along, they'd lock them in a room with some music and alcohol sounds a little bit scary oh. and they'd say come on thrash out your issues but somebody has drawn a line in the sand here yep. and said you must be accountable for your actions which can only be a good thing yep Shelley have, have our elite athletes or some of them I couldn't mm. shouldn't say I all know, elite athletes being, so this is just a couple um, should they be more team oriented? Have yeah. they lost their team spirit? Absolutely. And basically, they're doing a job. They defied their boss by not filling out this mm. form and not carrying out their orders. If I defied my boss and just didn't write a story, yeah. I could get sacked too. So they're, they're not mm. special because they're athletes. And they're in a team and they have to work as a team to win. So therefore, if there are problems, I think it's up to the coaching team to sort it out. I understand, yeah, I understand that, but they're also over there. The reason they're talented and have been gifted in the position they're in is because they play a sport well, and that yeah. is cricket. So, so it's so like me wearing the wrong swimming cap and sending boss. me home from the Olympics uh, because I wore the wrong swimming cap. Follow the rules. Mm, disagree, <laughs> but that's why we're on Angels. It yeah. makes it fun. Obviously, this has been going on for years, and so, yeah. you know, you got Shane Watson saying yesterday, why me? Why now? But it comes a point yeah. where they have to be responsible. Because we're losing and getting flogged. The <laughs> ashes are coming up. <laughs> also this morning, the first father who stood up to three young women in a McDonald's restaurant, the girls, were misbehaving when he decided to take matters into his own hands. He had no idea it was all being filmed or that it would end up making headlines around the world. Ladies, what do you reckon? Would you step forward in this sort of situation, say something? He regrets the use of the, the use word. Of the language is uh, he regrets regrets touching them, but said but he he'd do it again. But he just touched them, and she fell over because she was drunk. It wasn't like he shoved her to the ground. I say bravo to him. I think those girls should be ashamed. And something like this is going to hopefully change their behaviour. I hope they're both grounded. They look young enough that their dads are probably furious. My dad would have been furious. Well, let's hope, and good on him let's for actually caring enough that he thinks that they should pull themselves into line. Is ladette, they call them ladettes now, don't they? Girls that try and pretend to be blokes. Uh, and blokes shouldn't be doing this either, no. by the way. Mm. Uh, is it getting out of control then? Well, the evidence is there showing that alcohol induced aggression amongst young females is a real problem. But I would like to make this point, I'd like to play devil's advocate here. These girls, they've gone out on a Saturday night, 
They're having a good time. Clearly, it's turned sour. Clearly, their behaviour is unacceptable. However, the fact that it's been posted on YouTube, this could have repercussions for them for the rest of their life, and I think that's mm -hmm. a real worry. Yep. Elka, would you step in? Yeah, great call. Um, I definitely would step in. I think as soon as they walked into the doors of McDonald's, they should have actually been not been served. And if anything, it would have been, OK, here's a water, and mm. I think you guys mm. have hit your mark and it's time to go home. Good on him for stepping up. Agree with Shelley as well. Wrong use of language. Possibly mm. shouldn't have touched the girls as well. But mm. let's hope that they really are mortally yeah. embarrassed by what they've seen going mm. across and the fact yeah. that we're talking about it nationally. And they do something about to turn their lives around. Final question, how long do you wait before going bare with a new lover? No, not talking about clothes. A new study has found a staggering 80% of women wait at least one entire month before letting their new partner see them without makeup. They say they're extremely reluctant to let their someone special see them without their war pain until they have really got to know them. Lady, ring any, any bells? I Ladies. think we're all going to differ on this. Yeah. One of the first dates Thomas and I went on, we actually met in the computer room in Athens in the Olympic Village. So I had no makeup. Mm. Thomas saw me mm. as I was. And after that, we were in the surf and swimming and doing lots of exercise. So he saw me from day one as I was. Good. I think all girls, they want to look their best, especially at the start of a relationship. Koshi, do you remember when Russell Brand posted that picture of Katy Perry? Mm. The mm. world was in shock. My advice to ladies, get a guy with bad eyesight. <laughs> Amazing 24-7. <laughs> if my guy wants me to wear slap, I'd slap him. That's the way it is. No, I'm happy to go make up free. <laughs> All right, and you ladies. Go, girl. Yeah. Good to see you. Thank you.